BBC Television presents... Hancock. Here, yeah, read this. Boris has gone and done one. No one knows where he is, Hancock. Poor fool thought he was big enough to prorogue Parliament. That's a posh word for closing it down, Sid. He may have learned how to juggle a silver spoon and a couple of plums. <laughs> but he hasn't learned the lessons of history, has he, Sid? Oliver Letwin has got the rest of Parliament behind him, and he's going to have him arrested and tried for treason. Uh, he's stuffed it up right and proper, hasn't he? He's got himself in a right two and eight. It looks like the only one leaving will be him. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry business. I wouldn't like to be Boris, Sid. Treason still carries the death sentence. Nasty, messy business. There's a story going around that Jeremy Corbyn bought the axe that took off the head of King Charles I in a car boot a few years ago. He's lending it to Oliver. Whoosh! Like a knife through butter it was. Didn't feel a thing until his head finished up at the bottom of Fleet Street. <laughs> where it landed conveniently at the feet of a Sun reporter. <laughs> but after 400 years, the axe is probably a bit blunt, Hancock, and might take a couple of chops to lop off that big bonce of Boris. <laughs> yes, he has a very ample neck as Boris. He'll have to have his shroud especially made. It would take four or five well-aimed blows, I would say. Nasty business, very nasty. Lashings of claret, Sid. Glad it's not us, eh? <laughs> I wonder where Boris has gone. Do you reckon he's lying low with some of his friends from Oxford? Or perhaps Nigel Farage or Piers Morgan or Jacob Rees-Mogg? No, I expect he's gone abroad somewhere, taking a bit of an holiday. Argentina, Brazil, likely a small town in the jungle somewhere. He can go incognito, have plastic surgery, and they'll never find him. Disguise himself as Hitler. <laughs> It could be that's what he'd like us to think. Perhaps he's still here. What? Here in England, you mean? No, the place is crawling with parliamentarians. Don't be silly, Sid. They'll find him. I don't know. It could even be here in his team, under our very noses. Now, 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 Sid, you're letting your imagination run riot. They seek him here. They seek him there. The elusive Boris Johnson. Look a mercy. Why would he choose his team? It's the back of beyond. There's an old legend that the royal oak that King Charles hid in to escape the Roundheads was moved to East Cheam from Stafford to prevent it being destroyed by Oliver Cromwell. Well, I never heard that one, Sid. Perhaps Boris knows the legend and has wended his way down to East Cheam in order to hide in that selfsame oak, bringing history around full circle. Uh, he might have. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? What a load of baloney. You're saying that when I go out there into the garden, Sid, Boris will be there, sitting in our oak tree, and raving on about Brexit. I should cocoa. <laughs> ah, isn't nature wonderful? I bet dear old Boris doesn't appreciate the great outdoors. He likes his buses, does Boris. The traffic of central London, that's his front garden, is a yahoo. A bourgeois, a vulgarian. I say, old cap, you wouldn't mind not calling me a yahoo, a bourgeois and a vulgarian, would you? <laughs> I could have sworn I heard Boris Johnson's voice. I must be imagining it. Ah, it's probably Sid James hiding behind the tree. Come out of there, Sid. Nice try, but you can't fool me. <laughs> My good man, I'm not trying to fool you. It would be too easy. You're Tony Hancock, aren't you? <laughs> That's not the sort of thing Sid would say. Who are you? What do you want? Show yourself, and don't try anything funny. I'm armed with an insecticide spray. One puff of that, and you'll be on your back with your legs wriggling in the air. <laughs> well, if you can stop laughing for one minute, I'll tell you, if you promise not to tell anyone else. I'm not sure you're in any position to bargain, but go ahead, who are you? I'm Boris Johnson, of course, Prime Minister, or at least I was until yesterday. Yes, and I'm Jimmy Carr, pleased to meet you, now clear off. <laughs> no, I, 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 I really am the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. <laughs> well, heavens above, it is Boris, I can see you now. Are you sure that branch can bear your weight? Careful now, no jiggling about. Well, I'm buggered. Sid, Sid! I, 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 I ask you not to tell anybody else. Don't worry, Boris, it's only Sid. Sid James, we don't keep any secrets, me and Sid. He's my comedy partner. What on earth are you doing here in East Jean, Boris? Well, how can I put it? This is the royal oak that King Charles I hid in to escape those ruddy parliamentarians in 1651. So I thought I, I would hide in it too, if it worked for him and all that. What a jolly jape. 
Hey, it's the last place they would look. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Probably the first place. <laughs> look, Sid, it's Boris Johnson in our tree. What's it now? Why are you making all that flaming noise, Hancock? Boris Johnson up there in our tree, is he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, he is. Look, it's Boris up there, grinning like the Cheshire Cat. <laughs> You're not going to catch me out that easily, mate. Oh, blimey, it is an all. You, 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 that Sid fella. Couldn't get me some food and a couple of bottles of Beaujolais, could you? I'm famished and a bit parched. Yes, Your Honour. Your Worship, Your Highness. Hang on a minute, Hancock. I thought you were a parliamentarian like me. I've done with all that round-head nonsense. That was before we had his nibs in our tree. Think of it. We're in the midst of history. I'm a royalist to the core. <laughs> all right, Boris. You send down a rope. And we'll get the supplies, and you can hoist it up. That's jolly good. Tally ho. You will be well rewarded, my good fellow. What about a jolly old knighthood? Pip, pip. <laughs> you know what, Sid? That Boris isn't such a bad guy after all. Knighthood, eh? Arise, Sir Tony Aloysius St. John Hancock. Yes, your lordship. Yeah, Boris seems normal enough. Seems to be a man of the people. Apart from the fact he's stuck up our flaming tree. <laughs> stuck he may be, but what goes up must come down, eh? But make sure it's not on your head. He's a big lad, he's Boris. <laughs> I'll get his food and send it up to him. The King of England, I mean Prime Minister, has chosen our tree to hide in. We're making history, dear old tree. The things you've seen, eh? A king, a prime minister, and Britain's top comedian. Good morning. Is this number 23, Railway Cutting? It's a bit of a dump, isn't it? <laughs> oh, can I use your loo? Oh, but it smells awful, doesn't it? And then have a little nosy around. It depends who's asking. Oh, we're only a couple of Boris Johnson loyalists, and we heard he might have escaped here to get away from that swine Oliver Letwin. We've come here to pledge our support for our liege. Boris Johnson? Never heard of him. Where you been the last ten years? Boris Johnson is the Prime Minister, you lummock. <laughs> I may be a lummock, but you're not allowed to call me one. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Isn't Theresa May still Prime Minister? <laughs> Oh, don't you know, stop this in the bell. No, she's been kicked out. Boris is our rightful ruler. Oh, long live Boris. I should be wearing a long curly wig on account I'm a cavalier. But, oh, but they don't mean them anymore. You'll have to imagine it. This is most unfortunate, Sir Snidley. We'd better go and make inquiries elsewhere as to the location of the ancient royal oak to which our sire has apparently fled. Oi, you two. Are you sure that the big tree out there isn't the royal oak? Yes, quite sure. It's not an oak, it's a gum tree. Yeah, uh, gum tree. <laughs> yes, Boris is out of gum tree, all right, and so are you two. I don't know what we've done to deserve this kind of ignoramus. It's such a shame. We were going to whisk Boris away to safety, whence Oliver Letwin and his parliamentarians would never find him. Those flaming soft Brexiteers. <laughs> it's OK, Sid. I think we can trust them. Yes, our tree out there is the Royal Oak of Legend, and Boris has taken to its ample leafy boughs. I'll fetch you a ladder and you can get him out of here. Ha! <laughs> ladder. Oh, nay, Mr. Hancock, we will be getting a scaffold. Because we've fooled you. We are on the side of Parliament, and Boris must be executed according to the Relict of June the 27th, 2019. Miss Jean Miller, summon the executioners! <laughs> Yes, that dastardly Boris will get his just desserts. I can't wait to see him get the chop. No one can shut our beloved House of Commons. And like Charles I, the last person who tried, he will get his comeuppances. Executioners come forth, Cratwell and Stumpleg. <laughs> Ooh, I can hear them shouting in the X now. I hope it doesn't make too much of a mess of your garden, Mr. Hancock. Boris has got such a big head, it must hold a lot of blood. <laughs> We've been given a go, Ed Stumpleg. Fetch Boris one with that axe. See if you can get his noggin off in one go. Yes, where is that Boris Johnson? Is he up that bloody tree? 
Let me have a couple of strings in him, Crapwell! <laughs> no, you shall not pass. You shall not sever the boyish head of our leader, just so you can march in around Westminster on a flaming pike. <laughs> I say, steady on. I didn't want the bloody job in the first place. It was Dad kept pushing me and pushing me. I'd rather be on Gogglebox with the toss. <laughs> the silly old bugger's past it, isn't he? Don't worry, Boris. We'll save you. You'll have to give me the chop first. Oi, steady on. I think he actually means business. <laughs> All right, hit the fat one first, stop lad. Get a bit of practice on him, and then we'll go to work on Boris. OK, crap, well... I'll take a good swig at him. It would be like slicing bacon. <laughs> Evening all. Nice hanging baskets you've got there, sir. But someone else will be hanging if I get my way. That traitor, Boris Johnson. Wait a minute, Sir Snidley. I've just had a text from Oliver Letwin. He's just read the House of Common Statutes and Laws of England. We're not allowed to cut off the Prime Minister's head anymore. That law was revoked in 1798. Oh, it's just not fair. There's no fun anymore. I've always wanted to watch a good beginning. Boris won't be the head of the United Kingdom for much longer, though, because he won't have one. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oliver sent another text. Yes, it's true. You can still go ahead. And hang the traitor. Oh, good. I'll go and fetch a rope. But I'll take a selfie first with Boris, and then post it on Facebook. Wait a minute. He's not up there. He must have scarped. Boris has done a runner. Phone Scotland Yard someone. Tell him we've lost him again. <laughs> well, Sidley, it looks like your dastardly little plan has failed. The King, uh, I mean the Prime Minister, has made his escape. And now I expect is a board of ferry bell for Gabe Harry or the red lights of Amsterdam. <laughs> oh, don't you worry, we'll get the bounder. No rogue, pro rogue parliament gets away with it. We'll give him an old Brexit right up the Jacksey. <laughs> Spoken like a true Remainer and roundhead, Sir Sidley. We must be on his tail shortly. But what should we do about these two foppish fools? We can imprison them in the tower, or we could pop them. No one would miss them. The BBC would. Not from what I learned. <laughs> Just hold your horses, Sidley. This is England in the 21st century, don't forget. I'm not sure you're allowed to go around doing this sort of thing. Oh, sorry, I sort of got carried away. You say I do that dram, and I'm in the sealed knot. You know, recreating the battles of the Civil War. I was just getting in the swing of it. I don't know what came over me. I got a hot flush. I was working up a lather. <laughs> well, you can take your flaming sealed knot and get knotted, Sidley. I don't think we've seen the last of Boris Johnson. He'll be back. And it will be Oliver Litwin's head on a spike outside the House of Commons. No more Oliver Litwin! <laughs>